All right, so uh, it's eight o'clock. Dun, dun, dun. Time to begin, I feel. Time to begin. So, has everybody got their pen and paper? Everybody bought their magnificent brains. Everybody got a beer? Or wine? Maybe a cocktail? Oh, do you know what, actually? This is what I was going to say. I feel like, looking at my screen, like maybe a bit of uh, macrame pot hanging down might be good, right? I might get, I might try and get you some plant life going. Professor Quiz Witty, brilliant. Right, so let's begin. Mary and Archie Quiz, round one. General knowledge. So, round one, question number one. Which football club is Phil Neville co-founder of, or owner? Which football club is Phil Neville a co-owner of? Ooh, hmm, nice easy sports question to begin with. Easing you in. <laughs> question number two. Which leader was shot dead on the 4th of April, 1968? Which leader was shot dead on the 4th of April, 1968? Great day, the 4th of April. Great day. If I'm going too quickly for people, you'll have to let me know in the chat as well. Because, you know can't see your faces or if you need me to repeat a question just let me know in the chat and I'll go back to it mm -hmm. oh this might be my possibly my favorite question tonight there's some there's some strong ones question number three what links iguanas koalas and komodo dragons is it it's a multiple choice question as well I should, I might get a sound effect for multiple choice. I'll start again, sorry. Multiple choice question number three. What links iguanas, koalas and Komodo dragons? Is it A, they were all associated with death by indigenous people? B, they all originated from Australia? Or C, they all have two penises? That's right. What links iguanas, koalas and Komodo dragons? A. They're all associated with dearth by the indigenous people. B. They all originated from Australia. Or C. They all have two penises. As you get to know me, you'll see how much I enjoy having to make up the other two that go with the multiple choice question. Question. Number four, what channel separates the Isle of Wight from the English mainland? What channel separates the Isle of Wight from the English mainland? Wasn't there a dog found swimming across it? Have I made that up? I'm sure that either last week or the week before there was a golden retriever just found like making a dash for the mainland. <laughs> Question number five. Which Steven Spielberg film was inspired by Peter Pan? Which Steven Spielberg film was inspired by Peter Pan? Hmm. Give you a few minutes to chat about that one. Maybe you're on your own and you're just like, meh. Maybe you're a massive Spielberg fan and you knows it. Ready? Question number six. Which famous artist designed the Chupa Chups logo? Ah, multiple choice. Was it A, Salvador Dali, B, Andy Warhol, or C, Georgia O'Keeffe? 
Which famous artist designed the Chupa Chups logo? A. Salvador Dali B. Andy Warhol or C. Georgia O'Keeffe Ooh, YouTube's telling me we've got an excellent connection, everybody. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Question number seven. Seven. What is the term for the bending of light as it passes from one medium to another? Is that GCSE or is that pre-GCSE? Probably pre. My science is not good. What is the term for the bending of light as it passes from one medium to another? Who knows? I feel like I'm giving the ones that would make me scratch my head slightly more time after them. Like, hmm, we can have a chat about that one. Question number eight. Who was the ancient Roman god of war? Who was the ancient Roman god of war? Oh, I could do a myths and, myths and legends round. I could do that. Question number nine. Which English queen married King Philip II of Spain. Which English queen married King Philip II of Spain? Now was he the one, this is, this is something my sister would know. Was he the one that had the lisp? She once told me that one of the kings of Spain had a lisp, so he made the whole court lisp, and that is why the Spanish speak with a lisp. Vanity. And question number 10. In children's literature, who ate turkey lurkey? In children's literature, who ate turkey lurkey? So that is the end of round one. So let's give you the answers. And then you can top up your scores and we can move on. And if you feel like sharing, you can pop it in the chat and be all like, we only got two or hey, 10 out of 10, ma'am, we're amazing. Whatever you want to do. I'll give you a couple of seconds to scratch your heads. And for me to refresh myself. Are we all going at, at, at am I going at an okay speed for everybody? Hang on, okay, speed. I can't see, the chat's not moving. So let's hope so. All right, so the answers to round one. Question number one. Which football club is Phil Neville a co-owner co of? Salford City. Salford City. Now, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here to be... Um, well, normally in person, I'm quite pedantic. <laughs> but if you put, I don't know, Salford United or whatever, you can choose whether or not you feel you're justified to half a point. I'm, I'm you know, it's the, it's the first quiz. I'm not going to judge you. I, I will do. But right now, I'm not going to judge you. Question number two. Which leader was shot dead on the 4th of April, 1968? Martin Luther King. Yup. As referenced in a U2 song, I believe. Question number three. What links iguanas, koalas and komodo dragons? Is it that they were all assorted, assorted, associated with death by their indigenous people? Is it that they were all from Australia originally? Or is it that they have two penises? It is. C. They have two Penises. Excellent. I feel like that is going to lead me down a search engine rabbit hole tomorrow, to be honest. Question number four. What channel separates the Isle of Wight from the English mainland? It's the Solent. 
Question number five. Which Steven Spielberg film was inspired by Peter Pan? Hook. The amazing Hook. Six. Which famous artist designed the Chupa Chups logo? If you think about it, it's all uh, melty. It's A. Salvador Dali. Question number seven. What is the term for the bending of light as it passes from media, one medium to another? Refraction. Yeah. Question number eight. Who is the ancient Roman god of war? Mars. They're all planets, weren't they, the Roman gods? Nine. Which English queen married King Philip II of Spain? Mary Tudor. Ah. Mary Tudor, she was a queen for a little bit. 10, in children's literature, who ate turkey lurkey? Foxy Loxy. There you go, so top your scores for that one and we'll carry on. How's everybody do? Feeling strong? Strong on a Wednesday, hump day, getting over. Looking forward to Thursday. I'm losing track of my days. I need to start actually actively looking at my calendar. So, we ready? Round two, food and drink. Yes, why not? Let's crack on. Question number one, fondue is the national dish of which country? Ah, fondue is the national dish of which country? Mm. Let you think about that one. Fondue. Hmm. Couldn't even tell you the last time I had a fondue. It's not really the weather for fondue anymore either, is it? You need to be like skiing or something. Question number two. A Bloody Mary is made with a vodka base. But what spirit base does a Black Maria have? A Bloody Mary is made with a vodka base, but what spirit base does a Black Maria have? Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'd have one, not gonna lie. Three. What is found in macaroons, korma, marzipan, and nougat? What is found in macaroons, korma, marzipan, and nougat? Hmm. You either love it or hate it. Oh, oh, this is a strong contender for um, favorite question as well. Question number four, how many gallons are there in a firkin? Now, the reason I like this so much is literally the word firkin. Hmm. I was thinking about this earlier and I was like, what is it? I, I can't, my brain's like, I can't even conceptualize what a gallon looks like or what a firkin, it sounds like it should be a little, little fur pocket. Maybe it's a little fur pocket for two penises. Who knows? How many gallons are there in a firkin? Makes me wish we still spoke in gallons and firkins. Five, question number five. What is the main ingredient of a Palestine soup? What is the main ingredient of a Palestine soup? Hmm, interesting. I've never had one. But it's delicious. Hi, Team Nomad. Oh, look at that score. An eight for Clements. Very good. Question number six. Which bean goes into baked beans? Which bean goes into baked beans? Delicious. I've not had a baked bean in ages. Which seems odd, considering how many canned goods I probably should have eaten by now. 
Question number seven. Which Scottish river supplies 90% of the water used in whisky manufacturing? Which Scottish river supplies 90% of the water used in whisky manufacturing? Obviously that's Scottish whisky, not Japanese or Canadian or Irish. Just to clarify. Can anybody think of a Scottish river? <laughs> it's almost like a cheeky little geography question in the food and drink round. Hmm. Question number eight, inspired by this. What foodstuff was not rationed during World War II, but was afterwards? Hmm. What foodstuff was not rationed during World War II, but was afterwards? scratch your heads about that one if you like maybe you know it maybe you're like I know everything about the home front ah uh, the next one so this is there question number nine what is the ABV alcohol by volume slash percentage of mango unchained ah so if you're regulars in Mary and Archie's maybe you've seen it on the board what is the ABV of Mango Unchained? Oh, well done, Simon and Lucy. Strong, so is Ewan, strong. Love it. So what percentage do you reckon that is? Question number 10, what type of fruit is a red navel? What type of fruit is a red navel? Delicious. So, stand around two. Give you a couple of seconds and I'll blast the answers out at you. Ready? Looks like three people didn't like that round and left. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Ready, all right. The answers to round two, food and drink round. Number one, fondue is the national dish of which country? Switzerland, land of cheese. Question number two, a Bloody Mary is made with a vodka base. What spirit base does a Black Maria, Black Maria have? Tequila. Mm -mm -mm. Question number three, what is found in macaroons, korma, marzipan and nougat? Almonds. Lovely almonds. Question number four, how many gallons are there in a firkin? Nine. Still can't, can't picture it. Five, what is the main ingredient of a Palestine soup? Jerusalem artichoke. I know. Question number six, which bean goes into baked beans? Haricot. Question number seven, which Scottish river supplies 90% of the water used in whiskey manufacturing? It's the Spey, the Spey River. Question number eight. What foodstuff was not rationed during World War II, but was afterwards? Bread. Bread. I know, right? Question number nine. What is the ABV of Mango Unchained? It's 4.2%. 4.2. And 10. What type of fruit is a red navel? It's an orange. An orange, for people who aren't French, an orange. All right, so how are we feeling? Feeling good, feeling great? That's what we like, feeling good, feeling great. So I'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes, top up your scores, grab a bevy if you need a bevy. Run through, ah, okay, we got five, Clements, strong six. Clements is doing very well in this quiz. Adam, you got five. Yes, you and four. The Gibsons, strong six. Excellent work, people. Excellent work. I hope we're all feeling like we're brainy on a Wednesday, quite frankly. We deserve it. We deserve to feel intelligent. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Two's fine. Nobody minds. It's only, it's only a Wednesday. It's a quiz. It doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> it means everything. No, joking. All right. <laughs> so.
So let's see if, if my lovely helper is watching and is going to bring me another beer from the fridge downstairs. Please? Please? Um, this is where Kira goes, you said it was self-service. <laughs> Throws it back in my face. The chips are self-service. The drinks are always served by preferably a handsome Scottish man from downstairs. So... <laughs> Are we ready? He's on it. Yes, Murgatroyd. So are we Are we ready to move on? Ready for round three? Ready for round three. Where are we going to go next? Oh, five. So three in the second round. It's a pleasure. Oh, six. Nice. Guys are doing very well. Oh, I hear the tippy tippy tap of a beer. Thank you, guys, sir. Oh, wasn't he good? Thank you. <laughs> all right so hang on oh, that's a great noise isn't it great sound so round three now this was inspired by our lovely manager over at mary and archie cholton who um, when he asked me to do the quiz sent me a list of potential um rounds very kindly and i went that's a good one i like it fictional places fictional places Mm, I could have gone to town on this one. And then I was like, hold back, hold back. You can use it again. You can do another round of fictional places. It's okay, it's okay. So, fictional places. Question number one. St. Mary Mead is the home village of which amateur detective? Hmm. St. Mary Mead is the home village of which amateur detective? Love it. Question number two. What is the name of the fictional amusement park on Ila Nubla? What is the name of the fictional amusement park on Ila Nubla? I have no idea if the person in that question is basically for is watching. <laughs> but gutted, mate, if you're not. <laughs> So, you ready? Question number three. Care Paravel is home to the Four Thrones in which series of books published in the 1950s? Hmm. Care Paravel is home to the Four Thrones in which series of books published in the 1950s? Might have read them. Might have seen films made out of them. Probably shouldn't give clues. Question number four. Who used to host house parties in Crinkly Bottom? Who used to host house parties in Crinkly Bottom? Yep, yeah, I went there. Let's see if anybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, crinkly bottom. <laughs> Childhood days. Question number five. Which, oh, yeah. Bear with me, I will repeat the question. Which city was sung about by an icon for a B-side in 1972, after originally being offered to Mott the Hoople, who turned the song down, instead recording All the Young Dudes. So which city was sung about by an icon for a B-side in 1972, after originally being offered to Mott the Hoople, who turned the song down, instead recording All the Young Dudes. See, I couldn't make it too easy, but you know, and then it got complicated. Hopefully you stayed with me. What do you think about that? How are we doing? Question number six. What is the name of the desert planet that is the home 
I just read Adam's message. It is the home of Luke Skywalker and Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars. Adam, do you want me to repeat question five? Just let me know. What is the name of the desert planet that is the home of Luke Skywalker and Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars? Yeah, it was a big boy question. All right, question number five. Which city, so you're looking for the name of the city that was sung about by an absolute icon for a B-side in 1972 after originally being offered to Mott the Hoople? He's managing, yeah. Just name the city, man. <laughs> it's fictional. <laughs> seven, question number seven. Which video game would you be playing if your character was trying to escape Raccoon City. Which video game would you be playing if your character was trying to escape Raccoon City? Always like getting one in for the gamers. <laughs> Question number eight. What is the name of the mystical Scottish village that appears for just one day every hundred years in a musical of the same name. What is the name of the mystical Scottish village that appears for just one day every hundred years in a musical of the same name? Hmm. Who knows that old school musicals? got a feeling it was made into a ballet as well actually but maybe I dreamt it <laughs> question number nine which comic book hero can be found in Metropolis which comic book hero can be found in Metropolis hopefully you know that one We good and question number 10 again for a specific person who might not be watching <laughs> whose hometown is Sunnydale whose hometown is Sunnydale ah, pretty sure there'll be some fans out there that will get that one so I'll give you a couple of seconds and then we'll do the answers and then we're all ready on round four oh, boom and we're definitely in good time for the Great British Zombie. Excellent. How are we doing? We ready? Ready for some answers? Amazing. So round three, fictional places. Let's do some answers. Question number one, question number one, question number one. St Mary Mead is the home village of which amateur detective? It's Miss Marple, isn't it? Miss Jane Marple, played by many ladies. Question number two, what is the name of the fictional amusement park on Isla Nubla? Jurassic Park, yes. Question number three, Care Paravel is home to the Four Thrones in which series of books published in 1950s? The Chronicles of Narnia. Question number four. Who used to host house parties in Crinkly Bottom? Noel Edmonds. Noel Edmonds. Apparently I went to university with his daughter. Who knew? Question number five. Which city was sung about by an icon for a B-side in 1972 after originally being offered to Mott the Hoople who turned the song down instead of recording all the young dudes? Suffragette City. Suffragette City by the legend that was David Bowie. Question number six. What is the name of the desert planet that is the home of Luke Skywalker and Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars? Tatooine. I don't know why I have to say it like that. Tatooine. Just good, isn't it? Good word. Tatooine. It's not a word. Let's be honest. Made up. It's fictional. Seven. 
Which video game would you be playing if your character was trying to escape Raccoon City? Resident Evil. Question number eight. What is the name of the mystical Scottish village that appears for just one day every hundred years in a musical of the same name? It's Brigadoon. Brigadoon. Excellent. Question number nine. Which comic book hero can be found in Metropolis? Superman. Superman. And question number 10. Whose hometown is Sunnydale? Well, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, isn't it? Yes, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Excellent. All right. So hopefully... We're all doing good. We're all doing good, feeling good. How did you score? How did you score? Seven for you and strong. You and was that been your best round? Excellent. Doing very well. Oh, Gibbo got seven. Adam got a strong seven. <laughs> Nobody needs to know if you're doing badly. That's the beauty of it. Team Nomad, five. Oh, Clements. Sorry about that. Kira too. Sorry. Well, odd. I'll make it easier next week, maybe. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Good work, people. Good work. Staying strong. So your next round, round four, is going to be music. It's going to be music. So this is a combination, combination of questions. You and your name is getting sullied on the chat, mate. Absolutely dragged through the dirt so it's a music round <clears throat> combination of music general knowledge lyrics and um we've got a couple of intros as well so for those of you that do know um you know and those of you that don't hmm. so uh obviously there's copyright on the old uh youtube life uh so <laughs> went around the houses a little bit with this one and then found Three songs that I was like, get in. Two of them are just like, yeah, you can play me. Help yourself. It's all great. And then the, <laughs> the final one is like, if we put this, when we upload this a video, like that section won't be allowed to be played in like New Zealand or Australia or whatever. But it's just one song. So I figured, meh, that's fine. How many people from Australia are watching? Who knows? So. <laughs> Thomas, I don't think you should be peering through anybody's window. I mean, uh, debatable. So, are we ready for your music round? Question number one. Who is the patron saint of music? Who is the patron saint of music? Mm -hmm. Have a think about that one. Question number two. Whose solo albums include the titles No Jacket Required, But Seriously, Both Sides, and Face Value? Whose solo albums include the titles No Jacket Required, But Seriously, Both Sides, and Face Value? Hmm. Let me think about that. Yeah, that's a tricky, tricky question. Number three, which song is associated with comedy duo Morecambe and Wise? Which song is associated with comedy duo Morecambe and Wise? Surely that's an easy one. Surely. Question number four. <laughs> the Grammy Award winning, the Grammy Award winning Black Eyed Peas song, I Got a Feeling. Yeah. 
was released in which year? <laughs> the Grammy Award winning Black Eyed Peas song, I Got a Feeling, was released in which year? Grammy. Got a Grammy. I mean... I know it's going around my head. All right, so the next three questions, I'm gonna give you lyrics and you need to identify the artist and song title. Half a point for the artist, half a point for the song title. Now, they are all from a specific year. So I'll give you the year and then I'll give you the lyrics because it might help you along. All right, so number five, it's 1970. Number five is a song from 1970, and the lyrics are, there she stood in the street, smiling from her head to her feet. I said, hey, what is this? Maybe she's in need of a kiss. Feminism at work there. So there's a song from 1970. There she stood in the street, smiling from her head to her feet. I said, hey, what is this? Maybe she's in need of a kiss. Artist and song title. Maybe you think that one's easy. Maybe you're singing it, but you don't know who it is. <laughs> Just keep looking at the chat and thinking, I really hope Ewan's got pants on. <laughs> Question number six. This song is from 1980. Yes, strong year. 1980, I don't know why it's a strong year. It just is. Um, 1980. And the lyrics are, Instinctively you give to me The love that I need I cherish the moments with you Respectfully I see to thee, I'm aware that you're cheating, but no one makes me feel like you do. Mm. Mm. So it's from 1980 and it goes, instinctively you give to me the love that I need. I cherish the moments with you. Respectfully I say to thee, I'm aware that you're cheating but no one makes me feel like you do. Artist and song title. <laughs> love that. I would love that if somebody's trying to shazam me speaking the words. <laughs> Don't think it'll work. All right. Bleak, that song is actually quite bleak when you read the lyrics. Um, uh, number seven. It's from 1990. See what I've done there? See what I've done? Excellent. Uh, and the lyrics go like this. So you want to be free, to live your life the way you want to be. Will you give if we cry? Will we live or will we die? Profound. 1990 song. So you want to be free, to live your life the way you want to be. Will you give if we cry? Will we live or will we die? Artist and song title. Always awkward speaking lyrics. So. So the next three are hopefully the uncopyrighted songs. So I'm gonna play them to you. I'm gonna play you an intro, about 10 seconds, something like that. I'll play them twice. You need to identify the artist and the song title. So we're throwing it all in to the music round, throwing it all in. So we'll see how you do. All right, so number eight. I 
And again. Hopefully, that was loud and clear, and you know it. You know you know it. I know you know it. That's why it's there. Ready? Artist and song title number nine. Once more, for luck, why not? Come on, Maggie thinks it's easy. All right, and number 10. Excellent. So that's the end of the music round. How are we doing? Are we ready for some answers? Feeling strong, feeling good, feeling great, singing to ourselves, trying to get those humming lyrics over and over and over and going, I know it, but I just don't know it. We ready? Shall I do some answers? Could we have question three again? You can. Question three. Which song is associated with comedy duo Morecambe and Wise? Which song is associated with comedy duo Morecambe and Wise? Every Christmas. Every Christmas. Still good. Still watch it with my dad. Have a giggle. Are we good? Shall I do the answers? Happy? Happy. Let's do the answers. Poof. So, music round, question number one. Who is the patron saint of music? She gets sung about and everything. It's Saint Cecilia. Oh, Cecilia. Yeah. Two, whose solo albums include the titles No Jacket Required, but seriously, both sides and face value? Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Three, which song is associated with comedy duo Morecambe and Wise? Bring Me Sunshine. Bring me sunshine. Lovely. Question number four. The Grammy Award winning Black Eyed Peas song, I Got a Feeling. Grammy Award winning. Was released in which year? 2009. Ooh. I wonder how many people got that one. 2009. So number five was the lyrics from a 1970 song. There she stood in the street, smiling from her head to her feet. I said, hey, what is this? Maybe she's in need of a kiss. Feminism at work. Free, all right now. Half a point for the artist, half a point for the song title. Free, all right now. Six, 1980 song. Instinctively, you give to me the love that I need. I cherish the moments with you. Respectfully, I say to thee, I'm aware that you're cheating, but no one makes me feel like you do. It's Diana Ross, upside down. I know, right? I don't know. Half a point for the artist, half a point for the song title. Number seven, 1990 song. So you want to be free to live your life the way you want to be. Will you give if we cry? Will we live or will we die? Love this song. Adamski Killer. With the seal singing it. Adamski Killer. So half point for artist, half point for song. Same again for the next three intros I just played you. Number eight, half a point if you got Damien Rice. And half a point if you got Cannonball. Yes, and that's free. Thank you, Damien. Much appreciated. Number nine was Len, Steal My Sunshine. Gibson, I expect you to get that. And number 10 was Moaning Lisa Smile by Wolf Alice. And that's the one nobody in the Antipodes is going to hear. 
All right, are we good? How do we do? How are our scores? Still feeling strong? Feeling good? Feeling great? Ready for your final round of quiz? Yeah. Ah, 3.5. And hopefully with pants on, Ewan. Hopefully. Hmm. Lovely. Very good. So your final round tonight, sort of inspired by our circumstances. <laughs> I went with a bit of a theme. Ooh, Gibbon got a five. Got a ten. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Adam. Half a point, Alessandra. No. Hopefully next time we won't have a music round and you'll be like, ah, oh, I'm triumphant. Wasn't alive for most of those songs. I'm so sorry. I also was not alive for most of those songs. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Ah oh, well. Well, you know, just one of those rounds. We'll make we'll make next week's quiz completely different so we'll see what we do amy three feeling stronger my friend feeling stronger excellent so your final round tonight let's see how many points you can pull back on this quiz for your final round get in it's inspired by our circumstances so it's got a general theme running through of home so it's a general knowledge round based around home so you'll get what i mean as we go on question number one in which TV series would you find Claire Danes playing Carrie Matheson? In which TV series would you find Claire Danes playing Carrie Matheson? Yells. See what we're doing here? See what we're doing? Excellent. Strong. Question number two. Who was Home Secretary before Pretty Patel? Sorry, bad taste in my mouth there. Mm. Sorry, and again, question number two. Who was Home Secretary before Pretty Patel? Again, with that bad taste in my mouth there. Oh, better, always better after some mango unchained. <laughs> Question number three. Whose 1997 album was titled Homework and featured the tracks Around the World, High Fidelity and Da Funk? Whose 1997 album was titled Homework and featured the tracks Around the World, High Fidelity and Da Funk? Just on a, on a, on a side note, which... You're clearly getting used to me going off. How sad is it that one of the founders of Craftwork passed away? Ah, oh, they're meant to be playing. Were they playing Blue Dot this year? Either way, very sad news today. See so again, you see, steer away from the news. Don't watch the news. Sad things happen. Question number four. How many films are there in total in the Home Alone franchise? Hmm... How many films are there in total in the Home Alone franchise? How far did they push it? Let you think about that one. Question number five. Whose home is a pineapple in Bikini Bottom? Whose home is a pineapple in Bikini Bottom? If my mum and dad are watching, my mum will have just gone, what? <laughs> well, I'll show you sometime. Question number six. In which year of the Second World War was the Home Guard formed? Ooh, another 40s question maybe. In which year of the Second World War was the Home Guard formed? That could cause debate. Hmm. Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> Question number seven. Who created a drum and bass remix? Didn't I can't even remember putting this question in. Who created a drum and bass remix of Adele's Hometown Glory? Who created a drum and bass remix of Adele's Hometown Glory? They're not obscure. Let's put it like that. If you know it, you know it, right? If you don't know it, look it up. It's good. Drunk on the dance floor. Excellent. Question number eight. What is Homer Simpson's middle name? Is it one of the best episodes? Possibly. What is Homer Simpson's middle name? Tiff, stop inflating John Gibson's ego. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> DJ John Gibson. It's too busy being a daddy in York to uh, to come back. All right. And uh, number nine, Battersea Dogs and Cats Home was founded in which part of London? Hmm. Multiple choice. Battersea Dogs and Cats Home was founded in which part of London? A. Clapham B. Ealing or C. Holloway That's right, not Battersea Who knew? Battersea Dogs and Cats Home was founded in which part of London? A. Clapham B. Ealing or C. Holloway Utterly bamboozled Bamboozled by the fact it's not Battersea <laughs> But it's not. So take your pick, unless you know, unless you're one of the amazing people that have rescued a dog or a cat from Battersea and you're like, I know this. And question number 10, your final question tonight is, you know, it's brutal. What is the average price of a home in the UK as of January 2020? Ugh, nobody will ever give me a mortgage. A, it's multiple choice again, people. It's all okay, it's all multiple choice. A, £211,499. B, £227,967. Or C, £231,185. What is the average price of a home in the UK as of January 2020? No idea what's going to be on the other side of this. A, £211,000. Four hundred ninety-nine thousand pounds. B. Two hundred twenty-seven nine hundred sixty-seven thousand pounds. Or C. Two hundred thirty-one one eight five. What is it? What could it be? Hmm. So that's your final question tonight. Seven and eight. You lost the signal. No problem. So number seven. Question number seven. Who created a drum and bass remix? of Adele's Hometown Glory. Who created a drum and bass remix of Adele's Hometown Glory? And number eight, what is Homer Simpson's middle name? Great episode. What is Homer Simpson's middle name? That all right? Anybody else need anything repeating? Or shall we do your final answers? Da da da. Do some answers, should we do some answers? Maybe. Yeah, good to go. Ta, lovely. So, your last round, round five, home. Question number one, in which TV series would you find Claire Danes playing Carrie Matheson? Homeland. Two, who was home secretary before? Pretty, oh dear, Pretty Patel. Oh, sorry. Don't know what it is about, about that. Mm. Better. Um, Sajid Javid is the answer. <laughs> Question number three. Whose 1997 album was titled Homework and featured the tracks Around the World, High Fidelity and Daft Punk? Daft Punk. Daft Punk. In it. 
Four. How many films are there in total in the Home Alone franchise? My word, too many. Too many. Five. Five. Why? Why? Question number five. Whose home is a pineapple in bikini bottom? SpongeBob SquarePants. That's right, SpongeBob SquarePants. Six, in which year of the Second World War was the Home Guard formed? 1940. 1940, that's right. Question number seven. Who created a drum and bass remix of Adele's Hometown Glory? High contrast. It's high contrast. And question number eight, what is Homer Simpson's middle name? J. Homer J. Simpson. Question number nine, Bath Seed Dogs and Cat Home is founded in which part of London? Clapham, Ealing or Holloway? It was C, Holloway. Yes. And ten, what is what was? What was the average price of a home in the UK as of January 2020? It was C. Two hundred and thirty-one thousand one hundred and eighty-five pounds. So that's it. How did we all do on that final round? How are you doing, guys? How are you feeling? So type your scores and give me your scores overall out of fifty. Let's see how you did. Give me some feedback. Are there any rounds that you would like to see happen over the coming weeks? And also, don't forget if you love Mary and Archie. If you want to support an independent business, head over to the crowdfunder. The link is in the chat and buy yourself a pint. If you donate a bit of money, you will get your pint on the other side of lockdown. Just have a look at everything that's on offer there. Amazing. Ah, okay. So we've got five, a six, a four, an eight from Gibson. Team Nomad, six, strong. Not as bad as the music round with five. We got a total of like 15. We kind of gave up marking ourselves at the end there. Fair enough. I mean doesn't, you know, it's Wednesday. Meh. Ewan, total Professor Quiz Witty, 26.5. It's feeling strong. It's feeling strong. Taisy, 18. Brilliant. Gibbo, 30. Simon, 25 and a half. Yes. Clements, 30. Strong. Adam, 22 and a half. Basics. Nah, not at all. Another 30. Amy, Amy. Amy, I love you. I love the fact you're like, mate, seven. It was a strong, solid seven. Fair play to you. You, you arrived. You arrived. You did it. <laughs> Brilliant. Amazing. So as I said, we're going to be back next Wednesday. If you have any any rounds that you particularly like to see or any inspirations you want to see, um, I will try and do my best to make it happen for you. I can't thank you enough for joining us. I've never done this before on a live stream. I really appreciate you showing up, viewing, doing whatever you do. Please stay safe. Please be good. If you're key workers after a shift, thank you. That's It's as simple as that. Thank you. And um, I will try and make it easier next week for you, Daisy. I'll try and make it easier. We've got loads of different, loads of different rounds we could do. Not even a geography round in there, was there? <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Support your, like, your independent local businesses. Keep yourself safe, strong, solid, totally strong and solid. Keep yourselves busy. Come and see me next week. Tell me what you've been up to over the week. Please give me recommendations because the way I'm getting through we are, I'm going to need a new box set. So give me recommendations of what to watch. Oh, Ewan, Ewan. I mean, everybody was watching you through the window and saw your Jeep in your pants. No, pantless, mate. You were pantless. You didn't even have a firkin to, uh, you know, cause any discretion. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. Pants wrap on now, you and <laughs> literally like, yes, mate. Come on. What are you thinking? But yeah, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Please, um, yeah, as I said, support local businesses. Think about what you're doing. Think about who you can buy your stuff from. Enjoy your exercise. Stay two meters apart. 
Be good. Is this PG? Well, I have I sworn? Because I normally, I normally do a bit of a swear. <laughs> Bye, Clements. Bye, Amy. Thank you so much for coming. Unprecedented. I hate the word unprecedented now. <laughs> Fully hate it. Anybody else hate it? Hate it. Unprecedented. Oh, labs. It's nine o'clock. Great British sewing bees calling. What can I do? <laughs> so uh, I'll see you next week in... Um, I don't know. Maybe I will go rainbow. I don't know. I'll think about my think about my theme. Bye, Gibsons. Bye, family, Gibson. Love you much, Lee. We miss you in Manchester. See you in York as soon as I've seen my family after lockdown. <laughs> Prioritise the family. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Keep yourself safe. Enjoy the sunshine. Hello. Lockdown started. We got sunshine. How good is that? <laughs> Much appreciated from my perspective. Take care, guys. Like I said, if uh, you want to follow any V Day stuff, there's so much going on. It's such an important event. You can check out the theatre company or just or just keep looking around. I'm sure Captain Captain Tom will be doing something. But yeah, take care. I'm gonna log you all off, <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you next week. But look after yourselves. And um, yeah, again, thank you so much. I'm just repeating myself now. Drink a shindigger, maybe have a shot of tequila. Take care. Tra. <laughs>